The long wait for the Microsoft Loop app is over. It's finally available in public preview. Believe me, I tell you, it's worth the wait. I've been using Loop for private preview for months now, and it's been exciting to see and use it for real work and see that rapid development. Back in 2021, Loop launched with Loop Components. They offered a quick way to add a collaborative space to work in and to share across other apps. This was an interesting way of working that was difficult to adopt, and many people felt that Loop was a feature without an app. But now the Loop app brings it all together and it offers new places to think, plan, and create. So let me introduce you to it and share what I've learned so far. I'll walk you through getting started. I'll highlight some of my favorite features in the Loop app, and in future videos, I'll take a closer look. But first of all, let's take a recap. What is Microsoft Loop? Strip away all the catchphrases and the marketing, Loop is a new kind of Office file. It's simple to use. I can capture ideas quickly and loop others in to work on them with me. The Loop app, it's ideal for small to medium teams of people, and they like to co-create, they like to build on each other's ideas. They begin ideas in the Loop app, and then they loop others in using Loop components, keeping everything in sync. So let's see it. To get your hands on the Loop app, visit loop.microsoft.com. Sign in with your Microsoft 365 account for work, or your personal Microsoft account. With your work account, you can start to use Loop app with people from your organization. When you have Microsoft account, you can start to use Loop for personal productivity, and you can invite other people with their Microsoft accounts. Here's a tip for making Loop easier to find and use. Use your browser to install the Loop website as an app. This gives Loop more presence on your desktop. It won't get lost amongst the 20, 50, or 100 tabs that you've probably got open right now. Yeah. So before creating your first workspace, I also recommend checking out the Getting Started workspace. It's created for you when you first sign in. It's a guide to showing you how to use Loop, and it's built within Loop. The workspace includes examples of different Loop features in action and tips for how to use them. Okay, now pause for a moment too. Step back, take a look at the parts of the Loop app. We're inside a workspace right now. Workspaces are where you keep all the loop pages together. To switch between workspaces, use the drop-down selector at the top of the page list, or navigate back to home. The page list shows pages and sub-pages. You can organize these pages and group them together. And when you want to focus on a page, you can hide that list. Loop pages are where all the action happens. It's where we co-create, where we share ideas and coordinate our work. And on pages are loop components. We use components to make a quick start and to share them across other apps. I recommend using the Getting Started workspace for your own personal practice area. Get familiar with the Loop app. Try out creating your own pages and check out the new loop components that are available. Okay, let's create a new workspace. Workspaces are where you will bring all your project content together. Give the workspace a title, add an icon, don't spend too much time trying to choose one, and then choose a cover picture as well. Give it some style. There's the jumpstart feature that's coming soon that will suggest files to add to the new workspace. When you pick a suggested file, it adds it as a link to the page list. New workspaces start with a blank page, and sometimes a blank page can be intimidating, even when you have an idea and you want to make a start. So the Loop app provides page templates to begin with a little help. I like how these work. Select a template, see what the page could look like with some example content, and then choose to remove that demo content, starting to use the template. At launch, there are a few templates and more coming later, and we can't yet create our own templates but I expect that will be a future feature to come. Now Microsoft 365 Copilot, that's another feature that will help us get started. Insert a Copilot component and type what you'd like help with. Copilot will use information and files that you have access to across Microsoft 365. Copilot isn't quite ready for the launch of the Loop app, but here's hoping that that won't be too far away. I'm going to prepare for a meeting, and I'm going to use the meeting notes template. I'll describe the purpose of the meeting at the top, and I'll mention some attendees. 
Then I'll add some items to the agenda, discuss the proposal options, about 15 minutes. I'm going to mention Laura here to lead this item. I haven't shared the page with Laura yet, so I'll give her access. I'd like attendees to also come prepared to the meeting, so I ask attendees to read a document. I mention the document to create a link to it. I want to draw attention to this request, so I use the emoji and I add a pointing finger. I select the text and change the background of the text to orange. Now that's really going to get people's attention. The Loop app is launching with improved comments as well. Select the speech bubble to add a comment. You can mention people here too. And about those mentions and notifications, you might have noticed that the email notifications for Loop now include the Loop component. You can see where you were mentioned. You can contribute to the Loop without leaving your email. Now I need to loop Matt in before this meeting. The app provides a few options of ways that I can share my content in this workspace. I can share the workspace. This gives members access to the whole workspace and they can edit all the pages. I can share a page and this link gives access to just the page. And I can share the page as a loop component. I can copy a link this way and paste it into an app that supports loop like Teams, Chat, Outlook, and Whiteboard. When a page is shared, I use the Shared Locations button to show where the loop has been shared. It will list emails, conversations, and other workspaces that you might have added the page to. The Loop app has a private idea space just for you. This is where you can start an idea on your own. You can add a new ideas page from the Loop app and from the Loop mobile app. You can share your ideas page and work together. You can add the ideas page to a workspace later when you are ready. So after the months of using Loop and Private Preview, I have come up with three of my favorite features. I'm sure that's going to change over time. First of all, labels on pages. You can use them outside tables. Oh, we like to make um, tasks in long form on a page where we need a bit more room than a table. So I can add labels like showing progress, priority, or I can come up with my own list of labels. Then there's the new comments. I find these really useful too. We can hold conversations in those comments. I can mention a team member and bring them into the comments about the content on the page. We often use this for status updates. Lastly, sharing the loop page as a component. This is a fantastic way for sharing loops with groups of people and getting their input. I can share the page in a conversation in Teams or in an email. I can share a page in a Microsoft whiteboard or in Word Online as a document. Then we can reference our ideas and plan when we're writing the document. Or in Whiteboard, we can use sticky notes and annotations to help our creativity. It's exciting to finally see the Loop app available. Over months of using it in Private Preview, we have used it for working on projects, ideation, planning, and keeping each other up to date with what we're working on. I liken this to using OneNote for project notes and references. We create pages and subpages to keep our content in sections where we can focus our efforts. Now you can see the similarities with other products like Notion and Coda, but the portable loop components make it possible to share and contribute from other productivity apps like Outlook and Teams. There's something quite compelling about contributing to a loop directly from a conversation or a notification email. I don't have to open the link or an attachment, the content is already there, open in front of me, and it's inspiring me to be creative and encouraging me to, to get involved. So there's a lot more that I can say about the Loop app, but I'll leave that for other videos. In the meantime, take a look at my Learn Microsoft Loop course. Now that the Loop app is in public preview, expect to see more lessons added over the coming weeks and months. And join the Microsoft Loop user group where we learn and discuss Loop together with short talks, breakout discussions, and interactive whiteboards. So until next time, eat, sleep, loop, repeat. We'll catch you again soon. Bye for now.